Hey guys, welcome back. In this video, I'm going to show you um, how to use the attribute editor, some of the stuff in the attribute editor. And when I say some of the stuff, I mean just briefly show you some of the stuff because there's so much information in here. It'll be very, very hard for me to go through everything. I don't even know all of the stuff in there. But I'll show you the basics. And most importantly, just how to change the color of this object. Uh, in the scene, I've got a just a sphere, and I'm going to change a color to it. If I go to the rendering shelf, I can see that I've got some stuff going on here. If I put my mouse over this one, it says blend material. So I've got some materials here, and I guess the proper way to do this is by using the hypershade window, but we will go over the hypershade window later. I just want to change the color to this very, very quick. And so when I want to change the color, I, I not only just have to change the color, I have to create a material for it. Let me create maybe a, a cylinder so that we can see the default material. There it is. And so I want to create an, and maybe color this red and then maybe this one green. So I don't see any material window here. I'm in the attribute editor. The first window describes the object. It's a polygon sphere, P sphere one. That's what it's called. And we've got the translate attributes. That means I can move it. In fact, I've already moved it 0 0.078 along the X axis. Uh, we haven't rotated it or scaled it uh, or sheared it, but we can get to all of this stuff right here. Uh, the second tab is mostly I use it for the render stats. Whether this object casts shadows, receives shadows, this is where you turn it on. Uh, and then smooth shading, but we've got a keyboard shortcut for that. And then the double-sided part. Uh, this is for the actual geometry. Remember, I showed that to you. Uh, the radius and the subdivisions. You can add more geometry here. Uh, we'll leave it at, let's say, 20, but you can add more divisions here also in the um, height and the width. If I open up this um, attribute editor a little bit more, you can see that there was a tab hidden back there and if you click on this little arrow you can scroll through these tabs uh, or you can just open it a little bit more and you can see that that Lambert material is right there uh, click on that Lambert material but the only thing I can change the color just click on the color and then make it red um, but why did this one change to red because that Lambert one is the default material for everything. In fact, I'm going to hit W to move. I'm going to move this out of the way. And then I'm going to um, just create a cone. And you can see that that cone already uh, is red. Because that is Lambert one is the default material for everything. So if I want to, I'm going to hold on option middle mouse and then zoom in if I want to change just the, in fact let me go ahead and change it to just a neutral gray if I want to change the color to just this sphere that I have selected I need to create a new material and not use this Lambert one we should never change that Lambert one material so I'm going to go up to the rendering shelf and I can click on several materials. For now, I just want it to shine. I just want a shiny material so that I'm going to use this blend material. I can create another Lambert material. But I'm just going to click on this blend material. You can click on any of these to create one. As soon as I click on it, it creates a blend material, applies it to the selected object. And now I can go to this blend material. Remember, this is the shading group. This is where you get your displacement material here. And it's telling you that you're using a blend material. Here is that material. And now I can click on the color and change the color. So let's do it again. I want this uh, cone to be green. 
I am going to select a new Lambert material. This is Lambert 2. Click on it, and then now I can change it to green. And this one has the, this cylinder has the default Lambert 1 material, which I could see right there. Remember, there's so many tabs that sometimes you have to scroll across just to get to that Lambert. Again, never change Lambert 1. Uh, but then this one, you can, you can change the name to it. And I'll put, uh, I don't like to use green because what if I want to change this cone to a blue now? The, the name doesn't make sense. So I can put a cone here. And I could, put, uh, instead of this blend material, I could put um, shiny, red shiny. If I ever change it, the red name will, won't make a, a sense. Now, I'm not naming my actual um, objects. I am naming the material. Now I see that, look, there's a red shiny right there. If I click on this one, it's there's a cone material. Um, and I should probably, probably say blue, blue cone. And this one has the default Lambert material. So there's where you can change your name, material name, the color, the transparency. We'll go over all of this in a later video. I just wanted you to briefly uh, show you how you can change colors. And in fact, let's say that uh, I no longer want this to be shiny or I want this to be shiny and not use a Lambert. I can change the type very, very easily and change it to a blend. And now I've got a little shine right there. Hey guys, that's how you change a color or add a material and then change a color to an object. Uh, if you guys like the video, go ahead and hit the like button and subscribe and I will see you on the next one. Thank you.